Oh, hi! I didn't hear you come in. Welcome to my home. And no. Homer, didn't you get any milk? All I see is eggnog. Tis the season, Marge. We only get 30 sweet noggy days. I think I'm having chest pains. Mom, this fake snow is making me dizzy. There's just a little bit of green left. Mm -hmm. Ow! Oh, 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 Samson, it's you. Hello, Flanders. Well, which ones are yours and which ones are mine? Well, let's see. Oh, this one's mine. And uh, this one's mine. <laughs> this one's mine. And uh, they're all yours. And what would you like, little boy? You're not really a Santa, Tubby. Why, you little... No, no, Homer. Why do you always wait until Christmas Eve to do your shopping? You know me, Marge. I crave the hustle and bustle. Marge, turn on the juice! Gee, Dad, this is going to be the best Christmas ever. <laughs> you bet. Nobody knows. It's a secret. I didn't get my bonus this year, but to keep the family from missing out on Christmas, I'd do anything. You must really love us to sink so low. Well, let's not get mushy, son. I still have a job to do. Santa's back! Ho, ho, go! What's his name? Number eight. I, I mean, Santa's little helper. The Simpsons Christmas Special is a series of Christmas-themed episodes of the animated sitcom The Simpsons. Unlike The Simpsons Halloween specials, the episodes stay within the show's continuity with realistic storylines in harmony with each season. Its first premiere in December 17th, 1989, opened season one of The Simpsons. After that, we would not see another Simpsons Christmas special until season seven. For this retrospective, I will be focusing on the first eight Christmas specials. Season 1, Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire Christmas time has come and the Simpsons have different ideas how to spend their Christmas. Bart wants a tattoo, Lisa wants a pony, and Homer wants his Christmas bonus from work. But when his boss Mr Burns announces that we not give any Christmas bonuses to the employees, Homer tries to find other ways to earn money for his family. In this episode Barney had blonde hair which was the same colour as his skin but that was later dropped because of the belief that only Simpsons family should have such hair. The parents Homer knows and greets while finding a seat inside the school theatre were never seen or referred to ever again for the remainder of the whole TV series. Oh Bart, that's so sweet and it makes you look so dangerous. Season 7, Marge not be proud. When Bart is caught attempting to shoplift a video game, he tries to keep his failed four-finger discount trip a secret from Homer and Marge, and initially succeeds. But unfortunately, Marge finds out when the family goes to the same store to have the family Christmas photo taken, and punishes Bart by banning him from family activities. Mike Scully, the writer of the episode, based it on an experience in his childhood. Scully was 12 years old when he paid a visit to the Bradless Discount Department store in West Springfield, Massachusetts. A bunch of guys were shoplifting at the store and they pressured Scully into shoplifting as well. He ended up getting caught outside and had one of the most traumatic moments of his life. To this day it still terrifies me, Scully later said. Lawrence Tierney guest starred as the security guard in this episode. In addition to yelling at and intimidating employees of the show, Tierney made unreasonable requests such as abandoning his distinctive voice to do the part in a southern accent and refusing to perform lines if he did not get the jokes. Despite this, everyone still felt he did an excellent job. Well, I hope you're going to the Valley of Vista to try and save kid, because you don't want to come to my store. Catfish? Season 9, Miracle on Evergreen Terrace. After accidentally burning down the family Christmas tree along with all the gifts, Bart finds himself entangled in a lie of a Christmas thief. 
The townspeople put their money together to replace these items and then some, but after they find out the truth, the Simpsons are outcasts. The story for this episode was pitched as It's a Wonderful Life in Reverse. Ron Howge said he got the idea for the episode one day when he was heading to work. He was listening to the radio and heard of an orphanage getting ripped off and they were getting back more money than they lost. Oh, that's my girl. I love you, Marjorie. She's quite a gal. Oh, shut up. Season 11, Gift of the Maggie. A sinister toy company unveils Funzo to Springfield's Christmas shoppers. The toy is a huge success, in part because it is programmed to destroy other toys. With Christmas fast approaching, the Simpsons rush to collect every Funzo model before it's too late. This was the final episode of the decade, century and millennium. Funzo is based on Furby, the interactive toy which became a huge national craze. Hello, I'm Dr. Stupid. I'm going to take out your liver bones. Ah, oops, you're dead. I never liked that Dr. Stupid. Season 12, Skinner's Sense of Snow. When a blizzard hits Springfield and buries Springfield Elementary in snow, the children are trapped inside and soon rebel against Principal Skinner. Meanwhile, Homer and Ned set out to rescue them. Skinner's furious reaction to groundskeeper Willer's reluctance to destroy the tunnel, Bart Doug, is based on an ugly stereotype commonly referred in Europe about how Scottish people are cheap and go out of their way not to spend money if they can avoid it. In the original airing, the permanent record page that Milhouse rips out of Lisa's permanent record uncrumbles and reattaches itself to her record and causes the shelves to slam shut. It was later cut from broadcast for time. <laughs> Season 13, She of Little Faith. Desperate for money, the First Church of Springfield plans to rent out its wall space to local advertisers. Horrified at the living commercial the church has become, Lisa withdraws herself from the church and converts to Buddhism. After this revelation, Lisa must deal with the reactions of many of her loved ones who worry that they won't know how to cope with a Buddhist in the family, especially at Christmas time. One of the businesses advertising in the church is called Let's Get Fiscal Financial Planning. This is a reference to Olivia Newton-John's song, Let's Get Physical. The song that Homer sings while flossing his teeth is a parody of Devo's Whip It from their Freedom of Choice album. Excellent. Go! Ooh, you'll get yours. Season 15, Tis the 15th Season. When Homer is given a large Christmas bonus, he decides to spend the money on himself rather than the family Christmas tree in which it was intended. Later that night, he watches Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, and in seeing his own future through this story, decides to mend his ways before it is too late. The montage in which Homer takes all the Christmas presents from Springfield strongly references the How the Grinch Stole Christmas TV special. In fact, a parody of the song You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, sung by Dan Costello, can be heard during the montage. Come on, Death. Leave McGrew alone. Take Tiny Jim! Season 17, Simpsons Christmas Stories. With Tim Lovejoy giving emergency repairs to his train set and Ned fainting at the sight of blood, it falls to Homer to deliver the Christmas sermon. You can have the barn. Uh, now feel free to come by the main house for breakfast. There won't be any. 